President Trump expanding offshore drilling, or at least he wants to, uh, that's been met with considerable opposition from both sides. So here's the question. With oil at, what, $62 mm -hmm. per barrel, will they actually drill? Can you make a profit drilling offshore when you only get 62 bucks a barrel for your oil? Former Shell Oil President John Hofmeister is with us now. John, look, I think this is a wonderful thing. Get out there and get the resource which is ours. It belongs to us. But I don't think we're going to see much drilling with oil prices at 60 bucks a barrel. What say you? I think you're right, Stuart. I think we really need a, a price much more to the north of $60 a barrel. There's very, very little new work going on in the Gulf of Mexico, for example, because at $60 a barrel, you can't justify the economics of doing it. But you're right. It's enlightened, visionary policy for the 2030s, 40s, and 50s if no future president reverses course. We will need that oil at some point. We're not going to stop using oil in this country, even with electric batteries. Just look at the petrochemical industry. We need millions and millions of barrels a day for the petrochemical industry, and that's not going away. So eventually, we will need the assets that are offshore, but, at that pr but by then, the price will be something different. No one knows what it will be 10, 20, 30, 40 years from now. But in the meantime, John, are we not relying on fracking? Uh, you know, the new technology of going down and getting more oil from shale way beneath the surface of the earth. That's where new supplies are coming on stream in America, isn't it? Yes, that's largely the case, although don't write off the Gulf of Mexico because it is still producing hundreds of thousands of barrels a day, which is very important to us. And, and yes, the fracking technology gets better and better, more productive, more output per well, uh, and, and that's good for the American people and good for the, for the affordability of energy going forward. Now, we are going to be allowed to drill in Anwar, the Arctic National Wildlife Reserve up there in Alaska, but do you expect that to happen anytime soon? Well, there's been a lot of money spent in Alaska offshore that was not a return to investors. I think the onshore is a safer bet for everyone involved. We have the incentive of keeping the uh, Alaska, Trans-Alaska pipeline sufficiently full of oil to keep it operational. And I think we're talking about a very small, harsh portion of the, uh, of the of Anwar. And so I, I think the prospects look good, although the price of oil is still a bit iffy because you're talking new frontier, new infrastructure, all that has to be paid for, and $60 a barrel is a little bit tight to try to make that happen. I just don't think we're going to return to the days of $100 a barrel oil when we've got all this new supply coming on stream in the United States. Last word to you. Well, well not in the next two to three, four or five years, I, don't, I think you're correct. But we've got to think about the longer term. That's where the energy companies do it so well. They look out 10, 20, 30 years, which they have to, and nobody knows what's going to happen with Russia, what's going to happen with Venezuela, with other OPEC countries that are in turmoil. And I think we have to look out for America first. And I think the whole notion of America's energy dominance is a good concept mm. because it takes care of our energy security, our national security, and, and look, we really need the economic security that comes from both. Absolutely. And so yes. I think you have to take that long-term view, and that's what the companies do. Yeah, I'm all in favor. A energy dominance, it should be ours. We got it. Let's use it. <laughs> John Hofmeister, thanks for joining us. So we'll see you again soon.